Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you out there in the virtual neighborhood. My name is Michelle Pope, and you have joined us for another podcast, broadcast of Life is a Sacred Journey. I want to thank all of you for coming back. Um, We are in a hiatus, uh, so our ninth season will begin next week, um, and our guest at that time will be Writers uh, Coach Connection. And it's an organization here in Alameda County that I sit on the board of. And it's an organization that is always looking for volunteers, um, as well as I just want you to know about the great work that they're doing in Alameda Public Schools, helping children, uh, particularly high school uh, students, in their writing, uh, reading with comprehension, and then turning that into a writing, particularly you know now, Uh, with high school students, uh, it has been forever, had to write essays and and those type of things. And so this is a great program that I'm honored to be a part of, and I've asked Maureen Dixon, our board president, to come next week. Then after that, we've got um, uh, Stuart Furman, who is a good friend, dear friend, legal uh, aspects of caregiving, and he was a caregiver, and he will share his experiences. He's also written a care Giver manual that is excellent that he will share. Uh, after that, we've got in September Better Places for Us. Um, I'm excited to say that um, I bought a tree uh, in the Mendocino Forest, and that's where my ashes and the ashes of my two dogs will be uh, when we move on. And so Better Places for Us, I just wanted to bring that to you um, because I was so excited when I had the opportunity to pick my tree and all of that. And I don't look at uh, death and dying in the way that some people do. And so we really want to make sure that we're sharing that with you. So I want to first of all tell you a, a thought that I had this morning on my way in. And I'm getting used to my glasses. They're so funny. You know, you you buy glasses now online, right? You know, you send the prescription in. And I have to say, it's okay, but it's not the same as if you would be going to uh, to Kaiser, the ophthalmologist, and then they readjust them and they fix them. So sometimes it seems like my glasses work. And then there's other times that it does, I feel like I can't see at all. And then I have cataracts, so I'm, I'm dealing with all these little things floating around. But that's the wonderful, wonderful part of aging. I'm changing all the time. My body is a mystery to me. I used to think I knew it very well. But in my 60s, it has done some incredible things that I was not prepared for. So good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Hit that share button, like us, and come back every Friday. Friday morning at 8 o'clock. We will be here no matter what. I wanted to also share with you my new mask Karen gave me. I love this, the, the coloring and everything. And again, this is my social distancing mask that I wear when I'm in public. It's thin. So at work, this would not do because I need to have an extra layer. I just got lipstick all over it, but an extra uh, layer of protection. But I love this because it's pretty too. So these are the new sort of kind of masks that you can get out in, in the world. But what my thought was is uh, this week, I had the wonderful honor of remembering to call my auntie in Baltimore. And um, she and I talked all the way to from my house pulling out of the garage all the way to the office. And after we were done talking, I realized how much family means to me and the people that I love mean to me. It's been, I don't, I'm guilty because I'm running around saving the world, so to speak. Um, But I need to spend more time talking to my family. And so I just want to say that to all of you because that was a revelation for me. It's not that I don't talk to them. It's not that I don't love my family because they know that I do. Um, It's just that I'm really busy and then the three-hour time difference gets in the way. But that's an excuse. 
and I know better. I can do better. So let's all do better and pick up the phone um, on those Bluetooth calls and and stop doing business in your call in your car and call a family member or a friend that you have not spoken to in a long time and just let them know how much they matter to you because um, we just never know what is going to happen in life. So I want to talk about a few things that have been on my mind. Um, and again, don't forget to come back next Friday. We will have um, our, we begin our ninth season. And so we'll have new guests coming on. Um, this will be the last time that you see me solo for a while. But I wanted to talk about a few things that are heavy on my heart. And I've been seeing this on Facebook and everywhere. And it's about the post office, okay? So I had the honor of becoming aligned with the California Alliance for Retired Americans. And one of the things that I learned a couple of weeks ago was about this whole thing, or three or four weeks ago, about what was going on with the post office. But I want to share some other things with you as well, because these are the things that the legislative branch of our government are going to be voting on and making and getting them to the executive branch. I think that I just uh, put a Facebook video up and people don't understand that there is a executive branch and there is a legislative branch. And that's where um, Obama got a bad rap. Because being the president, the president is in the executive branch. It is the legislative branch that helps to write the, the laws, the policies, and get them passed. And then we go to the, uh, the executive branch. And of course, they have veto, right, veto rights. I have to take this off. I think this is why I'm sweating. Um, and I'll use it. Um, veto, veto uh Rights, And so we've got to be closer to our, our uh, legislative branch and understand who is, your, who, who is your board of supervisor for your district? Who are the senators for the places where you live? Who are the uh, supervisors in the legislative bodies that are a part of what happens in your zip code, in your neighborhood? You need to get online today. And look at your zip code, look and find out what district you live in, and find out who those individuals are and what, what is their stand on some of these things. Call them, write them, and hold them accountable. And then when the time comes to vote every two years, you'll know who you're voting for. And we can get people out of positions that are not doing things that are in the best interest of everyone. That this is not for me, Republican, Democrat, Independent, any of that. This is about who is taking your tax dollars and making sure that they are being used the way that we as a humanity feel they should be used. And we will not always agree on that. But our voting gives us the opportunity to have a say. It gives us a voice. So the things that we need to go to Congress now and ask them to support because this is really very, very important. We're running out of time, okay? We're running out of time. So I have to take my glasses off for this part because I can't read it. So we're talking about Congress should be, should be supporting the strengthening of Social, Secur Social Security. Why? It's not just about um, older people. I, I, I don't like it when we segment, segment people and make people feel, good morning, Carolyn. Thank you for joining us. Um, that we segregate people by age. But Social Security is not just about older people, it's about families. So if someone passes away and they still have children, those Social Security benefits go to their children if they're young. And so we, it's not just about older people if you just want to be that, that segmenting uh, the population. Social Security has to be protected from now until the future. It is not an entitlement program. I hate when people say that. Social Security is not an entitlement program. We all are paying into our Social Security when, and paid into it when we worked. Okay? So it's not entitlement. It is something that everybody pays into, each generation pays into, pushing it forward. So let's protect Social Security. That's going to be very, very important. We also need to look at Medicare and the Medicaid, which is Medi-Cal in the state of California. 
we need to look at those. Uh, that is a proposition that is recommending um, prescription drugs and covering more of them for our seniors and for families and for folks that need that support. I see so much mental health challenges on Facebook. I mean, half of the time, I know we pass on those videos, but I have to believe that most of you know that when you see somebody ranting and raving and giving their social security number and accosting another person in a public setting, that something is wrong with them. That that's not something to laugh at. That's not something to be uh, angry at that person about. We have people walking the streets with mental health issues and they are not being cared for. And so, yeah, they're going to freak out in front of you in McDonald's and they're going to freak out in certain places. And it's because we put them out there on the street. I just drove by People's Park, which is right up the street from my office, and it's Tent City. Okay? And those people are not well. There are a lot of drug, yes, young people up there that are doing drugs and all of these kinds of things. But you know what? Stop questioning and being angry at them. Why are they there? What humanity have we created where people would rather sleep on the ground and run away from a home, a safe home, a happy home? Nobody does that. So we need to stop blaming the victims of all of our um, monstrous behavior as human beings and start helping people. Mental health is crazily rampant throughout our world and we need to stop pointing finger at people and do something about it. Let's help mentally ill people, okay? Let's help them. Let's bring dollars and Medicaid, Medi-Cal, all of these kinds of programs are there for the prescription drugs because that's part of the problem. They're not taking their drugs. And if you're not taking your drugs or you don't have anybody coming on a, coming down the street uh, to administer them to you, then we have a problem. So prescription drugs is very, very important. Congress should enact the drug negotiations bill, which is HR3. Um, HR3, we need that. So that means that you can negotiate drug prices with these pharmaceutical companies. Now, I need to be very careful and I'm going to be transparent with you. I have worked for the pharmaceutical industry in my career and I understand the need for pharmaceuticals. Not big on them as a healthcare provider, but at the end of the day, some of us need some and I'm taking high blood pressure medication right now in my life in the last two years. So at the end of the day that we need certain things, but there are cheaper ways to give people medications and, and to pit generics against the top of the line medications. We need a stabilized prescription program where everybody can get access to the medications that they need in order to survive. If we're going to create medications and say to people you need them, then we need to also give them access. And again, stop victimizing people because they're not you. You know, some of us are so blessed. I'm one of those people. I have a car. I have a home. I get up every morning and I thank God that I have everything that I need around me. And some days I'm, I'm hungry, but and I don't eat the food that's in my house. I can even leave my house and go get what I want to eat. Okay? That, that, that's, that's privilege. That's privilege. I'm blessed. So I can't point finger at somebody else who's, who doesn't have what I have and then to try to determine and think I have the right to decide how they got that way. That's not my job. And that's not your job. Let's, let's get these things uh, in line. The drug or vaccine developed. Congress should ensure that any drug or vaccine developed with taxpayer dollars to treat COVID-19 is affordable. I'm going to read that again. Congress should ensure that any drug or vaccine developed with taxpayer dollars to treat COVID-19 is affordable. What difference will it make for all the people that are living on the streets if we can't give the vaccine to them free? So let's talk about that. Let's call these people, talk to them, and make them talk to you. 
They will make, if they don't call you back, they'll send, they'll have somebody call you back. But ask some questions. Don't, don't just give somebody your vote because they had so much money that they could have glossy commercials and, and keep you engaged and, and make you vote for them. Sometimes it's the underdog that's the better person to vote for. And again, I'm not telling you what party to vote for. I'm not telling you what person to vote for. But what I'm saying is if you vote for somebody, know they deserve to belong there. That's all I'm saying. So let's make sure that that COVID-19 um, is going to cost about $23 billion to manufacture the COVID-19 vaccine. Let's make sure that they don't try to recoup those dollars on the backs of poor people. Let's make sure that people who are poor can get the vaccine too. Let's make sure low income. Let's make sure there's levels so that everybody can get that vaccine and hopefully we can lessen uh, COVID-19 over the next two years. I think it will take about um, two years for us to get to a place where COVID-19 is like the flu, like we experienced the flu today. Frontline workers in nursing homes, let's talk about them, okay? Frontline workers do not make enough money to not have more than one job. This is where we see contact tracing. I just did the homework last night in preparation to come to you. They're saying that contract tracing is showing that, yes, all of you that had your 4th of July party and forgot to have on mask and do social distancing, you're a great part of that, of that problem, so of that, those increased numbers. But also, it is individuals who work as frontline workers, and they have more than one job, folks. I don't know. The minimum wage, I think the federal minimum wage went up in January or is about to go up to $16 and some change. Well, at the end of the day, nobody can actually live, I'm going to be honest with you, in the state of California to the quality of life where they have money to save. And if something happens that they're not, they're not falling apart. $16 and some change is not going to allow that to happen. So again, most of those individuals to save their families, keep a roof over their head, clothe their children, do everything that we're doing, they have to have two jobs. And so if you have a CNA that's working at one nursing home, yes, the PPE is there, everything is great, but then they're working in another nursing home or working privately in a home, they now have two social bubbles that they're a part of and they're cross-contaminating within the, in, within the two social bubbles. And so that's where you will find um, folks cross-contaminating and COVID-19 growing in those areas. So we need to make sure that we fund local governments to protect those frontline workers, and we need to protect nursing home residents and their workers as well. Again, we find out that over 50,000 older Americans and nursing homes up to date have died of COVID-19, and some of that was due to poor PPE and things of that nature. Good morning, everybody. It's so great to see all of you. Thank you for being here. Don't forget to hit the share button. Don't forget to share it after with friends that you know. Have your own share party. Um, and, and again, this will be my last week with you solo. We will have some new guests next week, but I thank you always for getting up eight o'clock on Fridays and joining us for this time. I want to get also to the fact that we have Congress that we need to ha ask them to protect the Postal Service. I have been talking about this and talking about this. I even had a couple of people roll their eyes at me and act like I didn't know what I was talking about a month ago. And here we are. Here we are. The, the post office is, they're moving boxes around. Um, they're, they're making it so people don't even know whether their post office is going to be open or not open by November 3rd. And so this is, this is what I read today. You can take it to the actual um, location where they collect all of our, our ballots. Uh, and I'm asking those of you out there that are mobile and have the ability, let's help those who cannot. Let's make sure that everybody's ballot makes it to the right place. Thank you, Sister Belinda, for always keeping us honest around this voting and making sure we talk about this. We've got to get those ballots in. We've got to get them in. I don't care where people live. If you need someone to pick up a ballot for you, pick up your phone, 
put a sign in the window. <laughs> I don't care. Let's 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 make sure that every neighborhood has the opportunity to be heard. Same thing applies to the census. Did you know that you lost 30 days of the census? The census now ends on September 31st not October. So let's get to our folks in our low income neighborhoods. And again, not to bastardize them or victimize them, but those zip codes need to be heard. So federal dollars get into those communities. Please call the people, call them up on the phone, see if they need help with the census. Uh, there are people that can come out to help from the Census Bureau. Be, you know, if you're a church, family. Be that hub. Call and say, you know what? We have nine, ten people. We'll put you on a Zoom call. Talk them through the census. Let's let's make sure they, they get counted because that's what happens. Nobody does the census and it's too long. Once the numbers are in, it's too long. The federal dollars get distributed in that way. So let's make sure I want to hear you say that you're going to help people do the census. If you haven't already done the census, if everybody in your home hasn't already done the census, take a moment today, tomorrow, over the weekend and get it done. And then pick one other person to call and say, have you done the census and do you need help? Okay, let's do that. Let's create a world where we're helping people to be heard. That's key. That's one of the keys to power. Um, and is being heard. You feel so much better. You may not get what you want, but if you're heard, then at least you feel respected. So let's let's make sure people are being heard. I don't want to run out of time. But uh, the last thing that I have read here, it says here, sign up for CARA's Senior Vote 2020 program and call a list of senior voters in your area to inform them about the important issues, encourage them to vote in November. So CARA is again, the California Association of Retired um, uh, Citizens. And the reality is you don't have to be a CARA member. You can do this yourself. Create a senior voting phone tree where you're calling all the seniors you know, or if whatever age group you're in, if you're a young adult, young adults, you can do this. Start your own phone tree where you're calling all your 18 and uppers and make sure that they are voting. And then let's get together and have some conversations about the, the things that are on the ballots. If you're in Alameda County, uh, let's talk about what's happening in Alameda County. If you're in Contra Costa County, what's happening there? Let's have some galvanized movements where we're having conversations. Let this be the first time that we really vote with knowledge. I know it's hard. I've done it. I've done it. I've gone in there and voted for the names that, that I heard the most and, and all of that. And then all the little other things, I guess, because I don't, I had no idea who that judge was or how, what their record was or anything. I stopped doing that. I stopped doing that a decade ago. I started really reading and really studying and figuring out. So if you need information, if you need information, you can call your U.S. Congress member and senator, their toll-free number, get a pencil, 866-828-4162. I'll repeat, call your U.S. Congress member or senator, toll-free number, 866 866- 828-4162. You'll have to do a little homework, find out, make sure you know who that individual is, but then call them and have some dialogue or leave an email. I want to tell you something that happened. I'm going to show you how your voice is so important before we, we end our time. In May, we went out in mass. Renee Nash, you know this. Many of you know this. Adult Day Healthcare, the model of care that Alzheimer's Services of the East Bay was under attack again, always under attack. And we went to you and we went to all of the people that we serve and all of us that uh, have Adult Day Health Cares that we are leaders of. We went in mass, called, text. I even had my daughter and a, and a group of young people call, text. Adult Day Healthcare was saved. It was saved. And it was because 
they heard the voice of the people. And so we got to hold people accountable. We got to hold people accountable. It is so important. What's that number again? 866-828-4162. That's where you can get in contact with your Congress member um, or your Senator. I want to end today. We only have a couple of more minutes, but I want to end today. Don't leave me yet. By thanking all of you for making season eight of Life is a Sacred Journey a very sacred and wonderful experience for me. I am so blessed to be able to have this opportunity to share all this information that I have in my head and heart that I gather because I know that it matters to not just you, but the caregivers that I serve and the community that I serve. I want to thank Nkatia Kabwe, who was the first person to say to me, Michelle, you need to do a podcast. And, and then along with him, Fred and, and Buju and Tara, they were my muse for this. And here we are now at our ninth season. Nine seasons mean nine years, okay? Nine seasons of Life is a Sacred Journey. And I am so, mm, it just touches my heart. So thank you all from Moldova, India, Canada. I'm actually becoming very popular in Canada. It's kind of wonderful. <laughs> Canada, all over the world. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. My brother in Cuba, thank you. I love you, and, and one day I will get back to Cuba. I see you there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister T. 866-828-4162. Call your congressperson, congress member. Call your senator and make sure you fight for the things that you know your community needs. You know what? We can be nice people and still speak up. Remember that old saying, the squeaky wheel gets the oil or something like that? I think that's what it was. Yeah, you know, it doesn't mean you have to be mean to people. No, don't be mean. I'm not asking you to be mean, but stand for something. There's also another saying, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So thank you for being with uh, Life is a Sacred Journey for eight years. Stay with us for the ninth year and, and we will continue to grow and we will continue to do what is good, what is good for the humanity. And then I want to make a shout out to daughter who will be a senior this year at St. Mary's College. I want to thank you, Jade, for um, 21 years of adventure. She'll, she's not having a birthday. I'm just, she's 21. And I want to thank her for supporting me and taking care of me during this time of COVID, doing the grocery shopping and just being the best daughter that a mother could have. And so I just have to shout out to her. I know she's embarrassed and, and I'll pay for this later, but <laughs> I got to do it, Jade. I got to do it. You know how I roll. And so I wanted to thank her for being a rock in my life and, and guiding me and helping me to be the best woman that I can be. Because without her, without my son and my daughter and my dogs, I would be nothing. Of course, God first. God is always first in my life. But on this plane, they walk beside me and they accept me for who I am and all my frailties. So thank you, family, for, for all of that. Also, lastly, and not, not, not always lastly, <laughs> to you, I want to say to all of you how important it is for you to take care of yourself. Stretch, breathe. I love Sister T always teaches us to breathe. Breathe in this beautiful life that you have. Breathe out that anxiety. Breathe out that pain. Breathe out the things that are breaking your heart. Take time to grow. Take time to love yourself. Take time to hug yourself. Take time for yourself. And I'm the worst person in the world because sometimes I overdo but I'm coming to you because I know what happens when you do that. Take care of yourself, love yourself, and don't forget, Life is a Sacred Journey will be back here next Friday morning uh, at 8 a.m. Pacific Coast time. I love you, and I pray uh, that 
peace and grace will follow you throughout this entire weekend. And be good to yourself. Be good to yourself. Take care.